Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today, we're asking if it's actually possible to build a time machine. You mean outside of a movie or a book? <laughs> yes. It's true we have lots of ways to imagine time travel, but there is real science behind it. And we'll talk to a scientist who says we can actually time travel right now. Today's question comes from Willa. My name is Willa. I'm eight years old. I'm from Austin, Texas. And my question is, would it ever be possible for us to build a time machine? That's a really good question. Could we build a time machine ever? Yeah, and I really wanted to answer this question because we've played with the idea of time travel on our show a few times before. Some of our guests have suggested that the only way to answer certain scientific questions is for one of our listeners to build a time machine to study them. Yeah, I mean, we did that in our episode, Are T-Rexes Smart? And also, How Did Language Begin? Well, you can go back and listen to those on your favorite podcast app. <laughs> but while we're listening to this episode, let's ask our listeners, do you think it would ever be possible to build a time machine? And how would scientists find out? Think about it, because we'll be back with a physicist who has a special knack for time travel. To help answer Willa's question, I called up Clifford Johnson, a theoretical physicist. What I do is think about developing the kind of tools we use to describe the universe, how it works, how it fits together, where all the stuff in it came from and how it all works together. So just like the little not so important questions. Not true. Clifford works on theories to find the fundamental rules or nature of the universe. That's pretty important, I think. I also think about things like how gravity works and how space and time work. Okay, so space and time right there in the name. Yes. Clifford also has an amazing side gig outside of being a professor. He's a science advisor to Marvel, helping their time travel stories make as much sense as possible. So Marvel, like the movies, like Avengers? Yep, those movies exactly. So there's actually like some amount of science in superhero movies? It's a bit of a lottery as to how much of the science actually makes it onto the screen in the final product. I wonder how often he wins that lottery. <laughs> <laughs> he did not say. <laughs> so, so what's the unfiltered, unvarnished truth about time travel? Is it like really possible? Because I sort of don't think so. <laughs> well, I put Willa's question to Clifford. The answer to is it possible to make a time machine is it depends upon what you want the time machine to do. The first thing you need to know about time travel is there are two directions in time, forwards into the future and backwards into the past. Clifford says that right now, one of them is possible. Now, we know for sure that there is a way of doing what you might think of as traveling into the future. So I'm assuming here he doesn't mean just like traveling forward into the future the way we normally do, just one second at a time. We are time travelers. I know. <laughs> hey, it's future me now. <laughs> yeah, Clifford says that's the annoying answer. We're talking about capital T, capital M time machine with buttons and dials and weird whizzing sounds and who knows what else. What you really want is to be able to go, can I go into this box? which is the machine I made, close the door, and then when I step out 10 minutes later, I'm 100 years in the future, or something like that. That we know is actually possible. Well, so if we're just talking about the future, like, how is this possible right now? Let's find out. So a way of making a forward-traveling time machine, to answer your question, is to build a spaceship. Once you build a spaceship, you have to fly it really far into space to a very massive star or black hole. Time near one of those things because of gravity slows down really quite a bit compared to the rest of the universe. 
That's because gravity has an effect on how time moves. If you're near a black hole or massive star, it means you're experiencing very strong gravity and moving more slowly through time. Hang out there for a while and then fly out of that gravitational field back to regular space and you will find that the rest of the universe has moved on considerably quickly. It would be like you've traveled into the future. Okay, so it's four very easy steps. First, you just have to get a spaceship that probably costs billions of dollars, fly off to a black hole, which is very far away, hang out there, come back, and you're hundreds of years in the future. Ultimate life hack. Yes, and your skin will stay youthful compared to everybody else's. <laughs> Especially after hundreds of years have gone by. Sure. Mm. <laughs> okay, so if we know that that's possible, like when is NASA launching their first time-traveling space mission? Well, it's kind of happening now. What? How? Yeah, every time an astronaut goes into space, they experience a difference in gravity, like why they're floating. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that means there's a difference in how they experience time, too. So actually, there's a time machine effect going on between us and them as well. So every time an astronaut goes into space, they're actually, like, going through time differently? That's pretty wild. Yeah, the stronger the gravity, the slower time passes. So any change in gravity equals a change in how you experience time, whether it's faster or slower. But we don't currently have the technology to get as far as we need to go for that big space-time machine effect. And we're not there yet because, you know, we've only just begun traveling around our solar system. But in principle, we could do that one day. Okay, but could we send that time traveler into the future and then back to us in the past to tell us what happened? Because I really, really want to know who wins the World Series next year. Turns out that's a bit more complicated. Well, the second part of the question is, can I do the same kind of thing to go backwards in time? And that is the part that we do not know currently, if that's true. So wait, we just don't know? I mean, couldn't you just like go in a black hole and then some magic happens and you're in the past or something? <laughs> Why can't we just reverse it? Well, we'll find out right after this quick break. We're back. So we found out that it is theoretically possible to travel into the future, but we're not so sure about going into the past. Okay, well, I kind of need to know why, and why aren't we sure? Well, for this, we turn to the most famous theoretical physicist, and perhaps the most famous scientist of all time, Albert Einstein. So our best understanding of space and time comes from the work of Einstein and others around the turn of the last century and the early part of the 20th century, uh, which is something you've heard of called relativity. Oh, yeah, I've heard of the theory of relativity. So you have this thing called space-time, which is space and time combined. And we understand that pretty well in terms of how we move around in the universe. Einstein explained how space and time get bent and twisted by energy, matter, and mass, and how it's tied to gravity. Is that what E equals MC squared means? That and a lot more. We're not going to get into the equation in depth here, but it explained the universe in a way that has proven very, very useful. So we understand the mechanics, sort of the business of how you twist and bend space-time and what space-time is, but we don't understand why time is different from the other space directions. Oh man, physics is just crazy. It's out of control. Yet governed by certain rules. <laughs> <laughs> just like we don't understand why time directions are different from space. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I know. It's sort of like, if we can move backwards in a room, why can't we move backwards on a clock? Why aren't those things equal? Clifford explains how that might work. And one way of thinking about what a time machine is, is that it somehow bends time around in a way that sort of makes it either loop back on itself, or you stop going forward and you start going backwards in time. 
just in a way similar to I'm walking forward along this direction and then I turn around and go backwards. So like a theoretical time machine could just like move around forwards and backwards in time the same way we can go up and down most staircases. (laughs) Exactly. And it's so crazy, it just might work on paper. And there are solutions to the equations, which is the way we would put it in our professional speak. There are scenarios, there are schemes you can construct using the laws of gravity and time that seem to suggest it might be possible. Wait, so like using math and stuff, we can solve equations for traveling to the past? Yes, but there's something that worries physicists like Clifford. The problem often is that if you go backwards in time, you, for example, could create things that don't make sense. So what kinds of things that don't make sense? Well, situations that shouldn't exist. So I could build a time machine, go back in time, and stop myself from building the time machine. Yeah, so like you build the time machine and you go back and you stop yourself from building it and then you never built it and then you never went back and then you never stopped yourself and then so you made it and then so you went back and then you stopped yourself and then you... Okay, I need to stop you. Okay, (laughs) okay. (laughs) Right, yes. That kind of situation could mess with the rules of the universe. For reasons we don't know, the universe makes logical sense. Yeah, we don't know why the universe makes sense, but for some reason it does. <laughs> yes. And that is why Clifford thinks it would be really hard to move backwards in time, like they do in movies like Back to the Future. Yeah, I mean, could you do something that prevented your grandparents from meeting and then you'd never be born? And then how do you exist to become a time traveler? Exactly. It makes no sense. Clifford spent a lot of time thinking about this exact thing for Marvel Cinematic Universe, where time travel didn't work in the back to the future way. It worked another way. Oh, well, I, I've i never, I mean, I've seen some Marvel movies, but not any involving time travel. So like, how, how does that work? Well, it's nicely explained in Avengers Endgame, which Clifford advised on. Oh, wow. That's a big deal. <laughs> professor Hulk, which I didn't <laughs> know he was a professor now. <laughs> well, it's like, prof- no. Was he always a professor? I think Bruce Banner is the, pr- the professor. He is a professor. That's how Uh, he created the thing that made him turn into a big monster when he gets angry. In the scene, he's very large and green. He's just got like these massive black rimmed glasses. (laughs) (laughs) Anyhow, here's how he explains the time travel paradox to his fellow superheroes. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Exactly. So is this actually the Hulk speaking or is it actually Clifford using the Hulk as a puppet? (laughs) I don't know. Honestly, everything I've shared about Marvel movies comes from our editor, Sarah, who is a big MCU fan. Yes, that's MCU. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, we all know this. Anyhow, (laughs) Professor Hulk here is saying that like the universe won't allow us to create time travel paradoxes because the universe wants to make sense. You can't create a past in which you don't exist in the future. Exactly. So that might mean that we can't build something that just allows us to turn a dial and step back into history whenever or however we want. It sort of becomes a loop of connections um, that you can't break, which is sort of fun. These are the kind of scenarios that come up when you start thinking about traveling backwards in time. (laughs) But Clifford says maybe there's another way to travel through time without creating these impossible situations. There are things we have today that 200 years ago I wouldn't have imagined were possible if I were a person from those times. So maybe the same thing will happen in this case. Yeah, like 200 years ago, who could have imagined that there'd be airplanes with Wi-Fi on them and cookies? (laughs) Yeah, and that allows us to imagine the possibility that someone from the future could build a time machine, or maybe they've already built it and then traveled back in time. Oh yeah, because if they built it in the future and then traveled back to the past, it's both happened and not yet happened. Time travel would make grammar really difficult. (laughs) Yeah, lots of potential consequences there. So all this is like 
kind of fun to think about, but when it comes down to it, what is the point of thinking about time machines at all? Some of the best and most profound things that we have done, you know, as humanity in terms of scientific advances, has begun by just speculating for fun about something. Clifford says that's how Einstein created his theories. He was just curious about answering interesting questions. And the answers he came up with are the basis for how we understand the universe and how we made so much of her technology. Um, We may or may not end up building a time machine, but the process of trying to figure out why we can't or how we might, if, if it's possible, will lead to things that we probably haven't imagined yet. So what if we time travel to the future to find out what those things are that we haven't imagined yet, and then we could imagine them? (laughs) Exactly. But how would we get back? Oh, oh, I mean, that would probably create a paradox of some kind. (laughs) A podcast (laughs) paradox. Imagine that you built a time machine inspired by this episode at some point in the future. We've got some questions for you, like... How did you learn to build the time machine? And how would you avoid a time travel paradox? Write down your answers to those questions, and you could take it a step further and write a story, a comic, or even a script for a movie all about your time travel adventures. Send it to us, because we'd love to see it, at tumblepodcast at gmail.com. Thanks to Dr. Clifford Johnson, professor of physics at the University of California, Santa Barbara. And special thanks to Willa for her question. You can learn more about Clifford and his thoughts on time travel and his work with Marvel by listening to our interview extra on Patreon, available to anyone who supports us at the $1 level or higher at patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. We also have free resources on our website to learn more about the physics of time travel. That's on the blog at sciencepodcastforkids.com. Sarah Robertson Lentz is our editor and designed the episode art. Elliot Hijaj is our production assistant. Gary Galhoun James engineered and mixed this episode. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all the music and sound design for this episode. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more stories of science discovery. <laughs>